Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel, and you're probably thinking, whoa, twice in one day? Yep, this is one of those out-of-band uh, videos. So earlier today, you would have seen the Knowledge Nugget on the OSI Model Layer 2, the Data Link Layer. If you have not seen that, please go watch that video as well. And then tomorrow, there will be Security Saturday, and there will be more out-of-band videos because it you know, I want to get caught up on some of these things. But what this video is about, given the current state of affairs in the United States, is about encrypting your internet traffic. And we are going to do that using an edge router. And you may have seen the PFSense videos. I was going to do a PFSense video, but a couple other people did excellent videos. I didn't really feel the need to redo those. So you can find those out there on the YouTube machine, but we are going to do private internet access using an edge router. Now, a couple things before we get started. One, I'm using an edge router X in this demo, so I'm using the baby, the smallest, least powerful edge router there is. Then next in line would be the edge router XF SFP, then there's the edge router Lite, then you have the edge router PoE, which is pretty much identical to the light, except it has PoE across all the interfaces. Then you have the edge router 8, which is like a pro minus the SFP ports. Then you have the pro. I think I got them all in there. And then there's a new infinity, uh, which if you haven't seen that out there, that thing is a just a monstrous beast. So since I'm doing it on an edge router X, just Please remember that OpenVPN is not hardware offloaded like an IPsec tunnel would be. So you will take some performance hit. Now, with a smaller router like the Edge Router X, you're going to notice it more than you would on a Lite or a Pro. If you run this thing on a Pro, it's it's going to run like a top. It's and um, just like if you have a beefy machine you're using as a PFSense or an Untangle or an Indian and you're running it on there, it's going to run like a top. Now we're going to run it on the Edge Router X because it'll run it. But I have 150 megabit internet and when we do a speed test it comes in around um, eh, 10 meg. But that's, you know, we've got PlayStations going and Wii's and internets of things, devices. I don't know. There's For a small network there's a lot of devices here. So Let's uh, hop over to this real quick. And the uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you all the tools that we're going to use to do this. So we're going to SSH into the router. And we're going to look at the web interface. And we're going to transfer some files to it. So first, to SSH into your router, you're going to need PuTTY. Or at least that's the tool that I use from Windows. There are other SSH tools. This one's free. So you can do a quick Google search and usually that first link will lead you to this domain where you can buy or uh, download PuTTY. And I usually just download the binaries. I don't do the installer package. And you can read what the rest of these files do. But here's PuTTY right here. And there's a 32-bit, a 64-bit version. Download the appropriate version and use that. We'll pull that up in a minute. Um, then the next thing you're going to need is, or what I'm using is WinSCP, and that is we're going to use that to transfer files to the edge router. And then the next thing you're going to need is a private internet access account. If you don't have one of those, my affiliate link is down in the description, and I appreciate uh, if you use that link. It passes a couple bucks my way, helps support the channel, and keep us going. So it's really reasonable. It's about $39.95 a year for peace of mind. So we are going to first, if you don't have a private internet account, please use the affiliate link. And that will take you over to privateinternetaccess.com. You'll set up an account. And you're going to want to get your username and password from them and then change your password to something that you know because they're going to email you a default password and you're going to want to change that. But take note of that because we're going to need that in just a minute. The next thing you're going to do after you have that is you're going to go over to the client support and it's the downloads and support and you're going to scroll down 
and you're going to expand the Advanced OpenVPN SSL Usage Guides. And at the very bottom, they've got this OpenVPN configuration files, and they've got the recommended or the strong. You can use, use either. For this example, we use the OpenVPN configuration files recommended by default link. That's going to download a zip file, and you're going to want to go ahead and extract everything in that zip file. Okay, so I'm in the Midwest. I don't have to choose the Midwest. You can see all of these different choi choices. We can connect to any, any of these in this list, but just for ease, I'm going to select Midwest. When I'm working in the Linux command line, I don't like spaces a lot of times in my files, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this file. Instead of US space Midwest, I'm just going to call it Midwest dot OVPN. So we're going to need uh, that file and we're going to need the CRT file, this certificate, and then the, the PEM file that goes along with that. So we're going to need those three files. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to fire up WinSCP. And we are going to do SS, SFTP into our router. Now my router that I'm dealing with is 192.168.66.1 and so my internal subnet that is attached to switch 0 uh, this router was set up using the WAN plus 2 LAN wizard and so ETH 0 is my internet port and 1 through 4 are then all in switch 0 and switch 0 is the logical uh, interface the 66.1 so I'm going to put in my router credentials here and it's going to connect. And then what we're going to do is on the router side over here, we're going to go to the config and then auth folder. And you'll notice that it's blank. So then we're going to come back over to this screen. I'm going to move this over a little bit. I'm going to select the, the certificate, the PEM file, and then I renamed the other one to Midwest. So we're going to take those three files and we're going to drag them over to the router. And so they are now uploaded into that auth, auth folder. So now the next step is we are going to open PuTTY. So here's PuTTY. We're going to put, put our router address in. Using the same credentials that I used to um, copy the files over. Now, once you are in the command line of your router, you're going to do a sudo space su, and that is going to make you root. Now, be very, 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 very careful of what you do as the root user. Root is the equivalent to the Linux god. It can smite thy router with a touch of a finger, so be very careful. I don't usually recommend this. This is the, the quickest way. You could, use, you could do sudo commands, but in this instance, since I'm probably not going to screw up my router, I'm going to do a sudo su. Lots of the ubiquity tutorials that I've seen where they have you mess around in the command line, I've also noticed that they have you do this, so that's why I don't feel quite as bad doing it. But generally, and I'm putting this out there just so people, because people will get upset. As soon as they see root, they're going to fly off the handle. I am telling you, you don't have to do it and it's not suggested. That is just how we're doing it in this tutorial. I am not advocating it. I am telling you this is how we're doing it. If you're following along and you type everything we type, you should be in good shape. Do not deviate if you're going to use the root user. I think that's enough warnings. You're all grown ups. You've got your big boy pants and your suspenders on. So let's proceed. We're going to go to that config auth folder, and we'll do a listing there, and we see those three files. Now, let's take a look at this Midwest OpenVPN file. So it's really just a text file that tells OpenVPN how to act on your router. And you can see all of these other things that are in there. Now, we need to, first, before we modify this file, what we need to do is we need to create a user name and password file. And that contains your open 
or your uh, private internet access username and password that I told you to note earlier in this tutorial. So first thing you're going to do, by default, the router only has Vi. I'm not a huge Vi fan, but we're going to use it real quick just because it's here and this tutorial is not about adding third-party repositories. It's about using what's on the router to do this uh, private internet access tutorial. So we're in the config auth directory. We're going to do Vi, VI, and we're just going to call this userpass.txt. What you're going to do now, Vi, you'll notice like right now, like if you hit in space and enter, it's doing nothing because you have to use special um, key sequences with Vi. So to insert, we're going to hit I on the keyboard, a single I. You're going to put in your username, you're going to hit enter, and you're going to put in your password. Now what you're going to do is you're going to hit escape on the keyboard. Then you're going to hit colon W exclamation point. That's going to write the file. You're going to hit enter. Then you're going to hit escape again. You're going to hit colon Q exclamation point. Now you have just created that file. So there it is. I'm going to pause the video real quick. I'm going to put my real credentials in and we'll be right back. Okay, so at this point I've entered my real credentials into that file. So there will be, there will be no more peeking at that file. I will tell you that a lot of times where this falls apart is with the username and password. And so people either don't use the correct username and password, or as you're about to see when we edit the OpenVPN file, they don't have the correct path. You do have to have the full path to these files in the OpenVPN. So we're going to edit that guy real quick. So we're going to do vi midwest.ovpn. And we're going to hit oops, i to insert. And we're going to go down to the user dash auth dash user dash path and pass and it'll be config slash auth slash user pass dot txt since that was the txt file we created we're going to go down here to the pem file and we're going to put the config auth somebody once told me you don't need that but we're doing it just to be safe so we're going to hit escape escape again Okay, so that part of it's done. Now, go ahead and close this. Now, what we need, and I actually have everything in a handy, handy dandy uh, notepad file. What we've got to do is we have to create the OpenVPN interface on the router and point the router to the config file. So that's what this line does, and then it puts a description in and enables it. Then we have to create NAT rules that will NAT our local network, so the 66.0, to the OpenVPN interface. Then we create another rule which should already actually be in the system that exists so that if OpenVPN goes down we're still NATing and traffic's still going. Then what we have to do is we have to create a static route to route everything out of the v, uh, V10.0, which is the open VPN connection. Then we have to modify our firewall uh, for that traffic, and then we have to apply the uh, firewall to the switch. I will post this or as much of this in the uh, config. Actually, what I'll do is I will create a... Uh, I will share this on a Google Drive doc, this exact chunk of config, and I will put the link to that underneath the private internet access. So to um, save a little bit of time, I am going to copy and paste. We're back over in our router. We're going to go, uh, we're, first thing we're going to do is we're going to do exit. So we go back to our regular user, and then we're going to type configure. And then we're going to paste everything. And we'll do a commit. The commit will do a sanity check. It'll tell us if there's a problem in any of our uh, syntax. It says uh, NAT configuration warning. Inter interface V10 does not exist. Cannot open config file slash config slash auth slash midwest.opvn. 
Hmm, interesting. That is because I have a typo. So, we will redo this again. And it's going to tell us everything already exists. So let's try that commit again. When you don't have an error, so common error right there, uh, did a little bit of dyslexia kicked in. I had two letters transposed. It caused that entire error. So now that this is correct, now uh, I will post the correct file on that Google link. So we're going to commit that. We're going to save it. And then we're going to come over here. We'll refresh our interface here. And um, if we go to our interfaces, you can see that the private internet access open B VPN interface is up and connected. We are transmitting and receiving. So if we go back over here and we click refresh on private internet access, we will see that we our IP address is 104.207.136.80. Everything behind my edge router is now protected and now going out through private internet access. So we'll uh, do that speed test real quick. So we'll go out to speedtest.net. We could also do a speakeasy. In fact, let's do a speakeasy. Here's our IP, and we're going to select Chicago, Illinois. And so you can see on the Edge Router X, like I said, I have a lot of devices behind this, but we're getting about 10 meg uh, down. If you have a device that you know has a bigger processor, more memory you're going to get much better speed results. This is an Edge Router X, the smallest Edge Router that there is. Um, so, but now all of our traffic is going through there, so um, my ISP can't see. I'm not using their DNS servers. I'm not, you know, I'm not using uh, my, my DNS anyway it goes through a local, a local server, so all that's being tunneled out when it goes out and grabs things that it doesn't know where it exists so everything's being tunneled and that's it it's really that easy watch for those spelling errors make sure that you have your paths correct in the files um, I will put that Google link down there um, you know thanks again to everybody who donates and uses the Amazon links uh, affiliate links and the uh, private internet access affiliate links. If you like the video, please give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please comment and share. And please come back tomorrow for Security Saturday.